Welcome to the ministry of Happy and Jeannie Caldwell. And now, here's Happy Caldwell. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday broadcast. Every year, ministers from across the country gather at Kenneth Copeland's Ministers Conference. And this year, I taught on God's AAA, authority, anointing, and agape. Today, we pick up with the third installment of the message with our focus on agape, the love of Christ. Our Christian faith won't work without agape love. Faith works by love. And be sure to stay tuned at the end of the show to learn how you can get your copy of God's AAA. But as always, before we get into the Word, here's Jeannie to minister to you in song, a powerful song. Let the Holy Spirit touch you while she sings fire. Shaken, Pentecost had arrived, and a room party. They were drunk on the new wine. Peter stood among them, he knew there was no doubt. His Holy Ghost fire would make you want to shout. Fire, shut up in my shut phone. In my phone. Holy Ghost fire, shut up in my Prophesy the prophet Jeremiah would lift his voice and cry. These silent folks demanded go home, they bust alone. But how can you be silent when there's, there's fire, fire in your bones? Fire! Shut up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. Stir up your spirit and refresh your soul with Jeannie Caldwell's album, Colors, with songs like Didn't Think It Could Be. I didn't think it could be till it happened to me. And My Father. I want to be more like him, more like my father, more like him in every way. You're sure to be refreshed every time you listen. Order Colors by calling 1-800-264-2525. Colors is just $14 plus shipping and handling. Call and ask for product number 15009. And now, here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. In Acts chapter 8, I won't take time to read it, we see where the man tried to buy the anointing, the power 
for money. And he was told, your money perish with you. You can't buy this anointing. You can't purchase the anointing of God. You get it by spending time in his presence. Authority, anointing, now agape. Let's go to John 13, verse 34 and 35. John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Now, here's the, here's the key to this. Love one another as I have loved you. So how are we to love one another? as he has loved us. I have discovered this both uh, personally and in the scriptures. You cannot love, I'm talking about agape, the, the love of God. I'm not talking about filio, eros, any of that. I'm talking about agape, the love of Christ. You cannot love unless you've been loved. God so loved us first then we loved him. You are to love one another as I have loved you. And by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. Our love one towards another is the signature that God's love is in us. I have discovered over the years that if I allow the love of God to flow out of me, it's not my love, it's His. And I can love people that I don't even like. You know, in the natural. In the natural, you don't like that person, but the love of God flows out of you to them. Now that's the way God designed it. He wants us to be able to walk in this kind of love. Have you ever, have you ever helped somebody, blessed somebody, did something for somebody uh, special that, that you maybe didn't like or didn't know very well, but the love of God constrained you, the love of God, the compassion of God went out of you? You're getting closer and closer to perfected love. I, I, I remember a, a church service in Tulsa. Uh, I think it was at the uh, maybe center. And I think Blaine and Helen Amberge had put this together. It was called the Church Reunion. And they had different speakers. And Brother Hagen was ministering on walking in love. And he was talking about being perfected in love. And so I walked down the front aisle and Brother Sumrall was sitting there and he said, now, he said, I know Brother Sumrall hadn't been perfected in love. <laughs> and you could hear Brother Sumrall go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when you have, and, and I, I knew Brother Sumrall well enough to know, he dearly loved Brother Hagin. He really did. We were flying to Israel one time and he and I were talking, uh, Brother Sumrall, and we got to talking about a prophecy that had been delivered nationally over television. And even though Brother Sumrall was rough exterior, he was tender in here. And he said, ah, he said, that prophecy will never come to pass. He said, none of his prophecies ever come to pass. But he said, if that had been Brother Hagin, you could have written it down. He dearly loved Brother Hagin. Why? Brother Hagin used to say he believes the reason the Apostle John didn't, uh, wasn't martyred was because he was the Apostle that walked in love. You know, he always referred to himself, John did, in the Bible as the apostle that Jesus loved. <laughs> he said that twice that I recall. 
He wanted you to know that. When he and Peter were running to the grave, he said the apostle that Jesus loved did outrun Peter. <laughs> he, he wanted you to know that he outran Peter. Oh, man, I can hardly wait to get to heaven. I mean, I'm not in any hurry, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You understand? Uh, Jesse and I did a meeting in El Dorado, Arkansas a few months ago, and Jesse shared his story about going to heaven. If you hadn't read his book or listened to him, Close Encounters of the God Kind, you need to read it. And he was telling the story over and over again. So when we got done a few days later, I, I was meditating on that, meditating on that. And I, I called Jesse. I said, Jesse, I have heard you tell this story over and over. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Just, I said, and you always talk about meeting Jesus and Paul and David and so forth. I said, but you never say what Jesus looked like. I said, I want to know. Can you tell me? I mean, what I meant was, is it okay for you to tell me? I mean, will God okay for you to tell me what Jesus looked like? He said, uh, sure. He said, uh, he was about six feet tall, tall, slender. Um, he said, uh, there were holes in his hands that were big enough to see daylight through. He said, that wasn't just a 10 penny nail. So that's more like a railroad spike. And he said, the, the holes are still there. And uh, he said his hair was, was you know. Uh, I said, well, what did his face look like? What did he look like in his face? He said, oh, you can't see his face. The glory of God. He said, I can't describe his facial features but he said, I can tell you this. He said, when he turned around and walked away, the back of his head was brown hair. Oh, man, I'm looking so forward to seeing Jesus. Are you? I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus. Hallelujah. Our love one towards another is the signature of God's love in us. Let's go to 1 John 3, 17. This is where we're going to close it. 1 John 3. I am not completely walking in the perfected love of God yet, but I'm closer than I've been. I'm going there. I'm going to get there. Because the authority, and the anointing, and the agape is God's AAA plan for our journey. 1 John chapter 3, verse 17. Whoso hath this world's good and sees his brother have need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Compassion is a force. Uh, Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw the leper. I've prayed with lepers in leper colonies, both in Carville, Louisiana, and when we went to the Philippines that time, Brother Copeland, we, a bunch of us went out to the leper colonies. Dennis, you were, went with us on one of those trips to the Philippines? Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, we went out. Now, listen, if you've ever prayed for a leper, if you, when there's a whole bunch of them standing in front of you, weeping and crying because nobody wants to touch them, and you reach up and lay your hands on a face where there's no nose, there's no ears, they're just nubs for hands. And, and see, that leper said to Jesus, if you will, you can heal me. He knew he could. He just didn't know if he would. And the Bible says Jesus was moved with compassion. The anointing was there. The authority was certainly there. But the love is what moved him. Compassion is a force. Galatians chapter 5, verse 5, says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So you got it. 
It's in you. You say, well, Pastor, uh, how do I develop it? How do I perfect this love? I'm glad you asked. How do I know when I have achieved and am walking in perfected love? Well, first thing is there's no fear. There's no torment. There's no anxieties. You're not worried about anything. Seven ways you'll know that you're achieving and walking in perfected love. Number one, according to 1 John 4, 16, we've known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So number one is dwelling in God, living in God. Not just Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, living in God all the time. Living in God. Getting up with God. Going to bed at God. Well, I wake up in the morning with God praying in tongues. I go to bed at night with God praying in tongues. And all through the night, I am aware. I have to sometimes ask my wife, I said, did I sleep? I used to have a man in our church. We'd go to men's advances. and Sometimes we had to stay in the same dorm or same tent. This man prayed in tongues in his sleep. I heard him. I mean, after all, we're, we're God inside. I'm minded. I mean, we're children of God. I mean, we, we should be wall to wall God all the time. Number two, God dwelling in me. How dwelleth the love of God in him? We just read 1 Corinthians 3, uh, I mean 1 John 3, 17. How dwelleth the love of God in us? Have you ever missed an opportunity to manifest the love of God? I have lots of times. I always re repent later when I realize what I've done and ask God to give me another chance. Because I know these are tests. These are opportunities that I have missed. And I want to go back and correct them. Number three, compassion. The product of love moves you. Mark 141, we quoted it a while ago. So dwelling in God, dwelling in me, compassion. Number four, every thought, deed, and action is motivated by God's love. John 3.16. God so loved the world. Now, we're in 1 John, it says, love not the world. But you have to study it out because it's not contradictory. God so loved the people that he sent his only begotten son. But we're not to love the things of the world. But we're to love the people of the world. And I am, I am excited about the fact that I am experiencing more of a love for people than ever before. Just loving people. Just seeing people. You know, I, I, we, I put my successor in as, our, as the pastor of our church that we built two years ago. It's been two years now. And people ask me all the time, said, well, do you miss pastoring? What do you miss about pastoring? Number one. I miss the people. That's what I miss the most, is the people. Now, there are certain things about pastoring that I don't miss. <laughs> <laughs> but I miss the people. Because we were, we, when, when we turned it over to our successor, we were dedicating babies of the babies that we had dedicated I mean, the church is a family. Hallelujah. You, you can't walk in the love of God if you don't love people. And you can't pastor if you don't love people. <laughs> yeah. 
You gotta love them. Isn't that right, George? Terry, you gotta love them. Hallelujah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade anything for all the experiences that I've had over the years with people. You just, you just, you, ha you have to have and be motivated by the love. Number five, rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded. And I'm going to tell you how to do that in a minute. Ephesians 3, 17, 1 John 3, 17. You can look them up. Rooted and grounded in love. And that takes time. And number seven, excuse me, number six, love one another as he loved us. Love overlooks the flaws. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love conquers. Love forgives. Hmm. Love thinks the best of every person. Hmm. I learned uh, a lot of this by watching uh, Brother and Sister Copeland and over the years, and one thing I've noticed about Brother Copeland, and you can't now, this is just the times I've been around. You can't get him to talk negatively about somebody. You just can't do it. He, he just won't do it. He's going to say the best about everybody. I've seen people take advantage of him, use him, abuse him. And what does he do? turns around and blesses them. That's really why we're all sitting here today. Faith is energized by love. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm almost done. How do we walk in this? How do we get perfected? God loves, we love. We love God because He loved us. And then we love each other the same way. Every grace that is named in the Scripture, almost every grace is love in some form. Repentance is love grieving. Faith is love in action. Hope is love anticipating. Courage is love daring. A man has just as much faith as he has love and no more. How can I love more? It's easy. You've heard the saying, practice makes perfect. How do you get perfected in love? You practice. You practice. Start practicing at home with your spouse, your kids. <laughs> I used to require my son to read certain passages of the Bible when he was growing up as a young boy. And one of them was Ephesians 6 where it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. <laughs> One day he came walking down the hall. He said, Dad, <clears throat> he said, you always have me read this. He said, have you read the rest of these verses? <laughs> I said, what are you referring to? He says, it says, and fathers provoke not your children to wrath. He said, Dad, you're provoking me to wrath. <laughs> I said, okay, I repent. I, I actually had to tell my son one time, look, I said, I've never been a parent before. You're my first case. <laughs> so you're going to have to help me. And he did. So I had to start practicing love on him. <laughs> practicing love on my wife. Practicing love on my dog. My neighbor's dogs. You practice, you practice. And practice makes perfect. Don't get anything out of this this morning. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
I trust the message on God's AAA has ministered to you. And as I mentioned at the end of the program, you can order your copy and own it for yourself. We like to take prayer requests, and a viewer wrote in and said, I'm going to have an x-ray next month to see if I have cancer. It has me so upset, I'm almost scared to go. Please put me on the prayer list. Well, first of all, let me say to you, I rebuke the spirit of fear out of your life. You don't need to be afraid. The scripture says that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Satan's just trying to build in your mind a fear, and fear will prevent your faith from work. So be delivered from the spirit of fear right now in Jesus' name. Now, I pray for all those that may be facing the same situation, afraid to go to the doctor, afraid to have tests, x-rays, etc. I bind that spirit of fear, rebuke it out of your body, out of your mind, out of your life. And I pray for your complete and total healing. Be healed of cancer and any other tormenting disease. Spirit of infirmity, you loose the people of God. In Jesus' name, amen. We're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report that you want to share with me, just email it to me, happycaldwell at vtntv.com. You can also call 1-800-264-2525 and send us your prayer request. Now, let's watch, let's watch this product offer and you find out how you can get your copy of God's AAA. Have you ever found yourself stranded and needed someone to rescue you? Many Christians get stuck in the ditch of life and need God's AAA program to pull them out. Authority, anointing, agape. That's God's AAA program. As taught by Pastor Happy Caldwell at the Kenneth Copeland Ministers Conference, this audio teaching aims to rescue you from crashing in your Christian faith. Get your copy today. Call 1-800-264-2525 or log on to vtntv.com. Thanks for joining us. Join me on Twitter. You can follow me at happy underscore Caldwell. You can also Watch our Sunday broadcast on line at vtntv.com. And be sure to join Jeannie and me next week at this same time. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. You can watch today's show online. Simply log on to vtntv.com. If you'd like to order today's broadcast on DVD, you may call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. To contact this ministry, you may write to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call us at 501-223-2525. And be sure to visit us online at vtntv.com.